Well, it's been about six months since I bought this bike and I realized I never made a second video about it. So today we're talking about this 2022 Trek Top Fuel 8. The first video I made on this bike is loaded with information. So make sure you check that out after you watch this video if you wanna hear more about the specs and geometry. The only things I've changed since the last video, I've added a longer dropper post, 200 millimeters to help close this gap a little bit, larger Shimano XT rotors, I am running Hunt Trailwide V2 wheels. I took the stock wheels off this bike because I needed them for another bike. And I added some nuke proof carbon handlebars, which I really can't tell much of a difference from aluminum. This bike cost $3,800 when I bought it back in October. And unfortunately, the price has gone up on these. So as of filming right now, it retails for $3,999. Let's talk climbing, shall we? This is easily the best climbing bike I've ever owned. It's enjoyable enough to pedal up some fire roads efficiently without hating life, but I'm most impressed by some of the tech climbs I've been able to conquer on this bike. I feel perfectly balanced on this bike when tackling tech terrain. The front wheel never wanders or is deflected by trail obstacles because it isn't two miles in front of me, and I have no issues keeping my body weight where it needs to be to maintain rear wheel traction. The shorter wheelbase of this bike makes it easy to maneuver in chunky trails and it's pretty easy to make some tight turns. The knock block system on this bike hasn't prevented me from making any tight turns or maneuvers and on a normal bike if I were to turn it any further it would be hitting my knees on the handlebars so I can confidently say that knock block 2.0 yeah. isn't holding me back at all although I think the first generation probably would. I enjoy the challenge of technical climbing this bike helps me succeed. If I ever decide to go tackle the impossible climb here in Bentonville, this is the bike I'm grabbing. For all other types of trail riding, this bike has not let me down. This bike is very fun to pedal around. Suspension bob is near non-existent. When you're not pedaling super hard, it almost feels like a hardtail, which is pretty nice. And I don't hesitate to grab this bike when doing longer miles. I wouldn't say it's as responsive as the Rocky Mountain Element I rode in the last video, but it's not a slouch by any means. And one of the only really negative things I can say about this bike is it's a little bit heavy for what's considered to be a downcountry bike. As it currently sits, it weighs 33.26 pounds. With my tools and stuff in the storage box, it weighs about 34 pounds. All right, we're heading downhill now, and this bike is very impressive. Flow trails are easy to blast at high speeds, and there's really very little to worry about. I've even found the technical descents on this bike are fine. You can push a bit harder and be more comfortable on a longer travel bike, but I've never had to make the excuse of, oh, I would do this if I had more travel. For where I live, I've found that 120 millimeters of travel is more than sufficient. I definitely use all the travel available to me from this bike, but I don't recall any instances where there was a harsh bottom out. The shock tune on this bike is just really, really good. I kind of prefer the more modest geometry when going downhill. I don't have to be super aggressive and hanging off over the front end just to keep the front wheel planted. Of course, that's going to penalize my speed a little bit, but I honestly don't care. I'm not out there setting Strava records. I just want to have a good time. Another perk to this bike that I didn't fully expect is that I actually love to jump this thing. My jumping skills have improved a lot since moving here, and it just feels really natural on this bike. The shorter wheelbase, the steep head tube angle, it more resembles a dirt jumper than an Orange County chopper. Wow. <laughs> I think higher speed jumps, this thing gets a little bit squirrely in the air, um, but it's probably a combination of, apparently it's very windy here in Bentonville, that shorter wheelbase that I was praising just a few moments ago, and probably a smidge of rider error. Whatever the case may be, I really enjoy jumping with this bike. If you couldn't tell by now, this is my favorite full suspension bike I've ever owned. I don't know what to say about it, it's just really good. I don't have a ton of criticisms for it. It's a little heavy, yes, but that's not the end of the world. But this thing is just really, really good. Even for a Trek. This class of bike is just so incredibly capable, and I do remember when they used to call these 
trail bikes back in the day, like one to three years ago. Long, low, and slack isn't a one-size-fits-all formula, and I'm excited to see oh, these more neutral <laughs> down-country trail bikes Ooh. being offered. You won't be as fast going downhill on these types of bikes, but I'll take that penalty if it means I can pedal around easier and I can climb to the top a little bit easier. So if you're looking for a bike that can kind of do a little bit of everything, this Trek Top Fuel 8 is a pretty solid contender. And here on the Cobra score, this bike ranks second place, pretty close behind the Rocky Mountain Element. And now it's time for the unthinkable. I'm gonna say something I never thought I'd say. Trek, I'm sorry. That it took you this long to make a bike worth buying. <laughs> Boom! Roasted! Hit the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.